there's a lot of value when it comes to creating a brand. It's the essence of a business. It's how you communicate your values and what your brand is all about. Sets the tone. And it's like putting out a frequency to attract the right audience. You could have a cheap brand, you attract a cheap audience. You could have an affluent brand, and you can attract a more affluent audience. So branding is really important because it defines how you want your business to be seen. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to create a powerful brand guide, giving you a walkthrough of a brand guide, some of the elements and why it's important. But let's start off with why we're talking about a brand guide. Now, I've worked with a lot of businesses. Some are smaller, some are larger. Some have brand guides and some don't. But why am I an advocate for a brand guide? Because branding makes a difference. Do you remember these two guys? This was the good old PC versus Mac. We had the nerdy PC guy and the cool artistic Mac guy, Apple. And the branding of these commercials really were eaten into PC because all the cool kids and the affluent artists were wanting Mac products a lot because the brand. And if you continue to watch Apple's branding, their products are sleek. They are look different. They're elegant. Now through the years, PC has caught up and they're doing a lot better than they were. But once upon a time, it was like a night and day difference. And the branding made a big difference on why Apple can charge more for their products. Number one, the brand guide can help you clarify the brand. Maybe some elements about your brand, but going through and documenting it helps you to clarify it so that everyone's playing with the same deck. Everyone's following the same idea of what the brand is. You wouldn't want different members of your team or company communicating your brand differently. So documenting it is important. Number two, by establishing your brand, you can differentiate it just like PC and Apple. They differentiated themselves, which helped elevate their positioning in the market. And having a brand guide will ensure consistency because if you've ever been to like a restaurant and maybe it was a chain and you get something that you're used to getting and it's not the same, that typically gives disappointment. So when you want to really build trust and rapport, you want to do things consistently. So let's look at a couple things. Can you tell the difference between these two pairs of jeans. Now, I've done a lot of speaking engagements and I've asked the crowd, can you tell the difference between these two pair of jeans? And a lot of times people will say, oh, the one on the right's a little bit more washed out. Well, the visual difference isn't really the difference. The big difference is the price of the jeans. The jeans on the left are $100, the jeans on the right are $1,000. Now, are the jeans on the right 10 times better? Not really. Then what's the difference? Branding. It's the brand. There's value in the brand on the right had higher positioned brand positioning and they were able to charge more for their service. Now, here's an interesting thing. If the brand on the right that's charging $1,000 for the pair of jeans, was to discount their jeans to a hundred dollars. Would the same people want them? Maybe at first, but if everyone could get them for a hundred dollars, then no. Some people buy high because they want to distinguish themselves. That's about the brand. Now let's look at some business cards because some people may say, does branding really matter for a small business? I recall looking at a business card template once upon a time when I was first starting my freelance business and I got this cheap little business card and it looked lame. It was a weak 
paper stock. And I ended up just not liking it, so I got rid of it. I ended up seeing that template many times out there in public when networking. And every time I saw it, I was just like, it looked cheap. I knew where it came from. And it looked like that business owner was just getting started. It took away their credibility. Because I knew when I was just getting started, I was just getting started. Versus, look at the business card on the right. That is a metal business card. Very ornate. Very high class. So if you were going to be buying an engagement ring and you got on one hand a generic looking business card that was shoddy on the other hand a nice elegant one and you had the money and were really trying to make a good investment which one would have more credibility for you so branding matters details matter right which, by the way, if you haven't done so, if you could like and subscribe this video, it would be highly appreciated. I'm trying to grow this audience to better serve my mission of amplifying businesses with the attitude, expertise, and drive to thrive. So thank you. All right, this last example here, we have a amateur photo of an outdoor scene. And you're like, oh, that looks nice. That's a pretty decent job. You got the birds in there and everything. Amateur, now professional. You can see the quality difference. You can see that this person knows what they're doing. It's a completely different type of photo. And you can tell the difference when you're doing things on the cheap and when you're doing things with a professional. And if you can't tell, I guarantee you those who are experiencing your brand can. So those details matter. That's why it's important not just to say, oh, we're going to wing it. You want to work with somebody because people can tell the difference between a cheap steak or something that's high quality. Now, I want you to know that if that's not your expertise, you may not realize. You may like the branding that you have. You may think it's pretty decent, but it may be communicating things that you're unaware of. So it's always helpful to have a professional that has some branding, graphic design, expertise, look at the branding and your messaging to make sure it's on point and it's communicating what you want it to communicate. Colors mean something. Fonts mean something. They all communicate something. So we're going to go into Canva real quick, and I'm going to give you a quick tour of something that I thought was pretty cool. So this is Canva, and this is an online tool that you can create graphics and videos and print items. And I've got this little brand guides presentation that you can use to create a brand guide. Now we get, took quite some time to get here, sharing why and how branding is important. Now we're talking about how to. Here's my suggestion. You can use a tool like Canva to outline a flow. You can get some ideas. But I highly suggest, don't just use the tool to let it create a brand for you. These are templates. They're not branded to any particular business. So you could use it to begin outlining some components, getting some of your thoughts. But it's worth the investment. The brand, as we just talked about, I spent all that time talking about how important it is to have a solid brand because it's worth taking the time to work with somebody who can guide you through and create a brand for your business. Or if you already have a brand to refine it, make sure it's tightened up. So it's really uh, consistent. It's communicating what you want it to communicate and it's attracting the right audience. So here's some of the elements we have in this brand template. We've got the cover, the key points that they're going to cover in this brand guide, which we have the brand identity, the strategy behind the brand, the logo, the colors, the typography, again, all these different things communicate something. And that's why it's important not just to say, oh, I like how it looks. It's not exactly making a decision that's strong for communicating what you'd want your brand to communicate. That'd be like picking the winning football team by saying, oh, I like the jerseys. It's just not the best strategy. So we want to look at what is the brand about? 
Branding is more than just a logo. It adds spirit and a soul to what otherwise would be robotic, automated, generic priced value proposition. So we're looking at the different stages of going through a brand guide. You have a discovery phase, really understanding who the company is, what it's about, and coming up with ideas, different ways of articulating that visually with messaging, and then executing the deliverables. Now this is just sharing their process. And you could see the different styles of a logo that they're coming up with different things that they could do to communicate the brand values, really tying everything together. They share the logo. They talk about the process again. You could have a tagline that goes with the logo really communicates and aligns the visuals with the messaging. You can share different treatments of the logo, different brand elements, communicate do's and don'ts. You wouldn't want someone to chop off or squish your logo and make it look like it looks generic. You want to have this clearly defined so that if you're working with a marketing professional or you have an internal marketing team, or if you hire a marketing agency that they're going to be following the recipe to get the right result. Colors, you, you want to choose colors, a main color, usually a primary color, complementary colors, and you'd want to get the actual hexes if you're using digital or the CMYK if you're doing print and really get clear on what they are so that if you're printing things, your ads look consistent. The colors are coming across. If you're doing things on digital. You want them to look consistent. Have you ever got like a product and the printing looked off, it just quite didn't have the same feel to it, but you don't want it to look off. Typography. You want to choose typography that really communicates the style that you're looking for. Is it more eclectic and elegant? Are we looking bold and tough? Different fonts communi communicate different feelings, convey different senses. So you want to choose the, the type of font, the weights that you would want to choose. You might have different fonts for your, the web, the internet, and for print, because the web has certain fonts available for it as print have different fonts for it. And sometimes they can be the same, but sometimes they need to be different depending on your needs. And then structuring content. If you have a website, you might need to outline the different types of layouts for your web design. If you're doing print again, you might have certain layouts, just like this template has certain layouts, but getting those clearly defined, having a style guide, because once you define it, you can make sure the other ads that you put out or web pages that you put out or social media posts that you put out all have a similar look and feel. They all look related. They all look in brand. Creating a brand voice. So really identifying how you communicate the type of voice that you have, making sure that that's clear. Cause if you want to sound more Southern, for example, you have a country themed store. You might want to have a little fun with the Southern twang. If you want to sound more elegant, like a Ritz Carlton, if you're trying to sound like a survival company, how you communicate, it's going to be different. The usage of photos, you can get clear on the types and styles of imagery and photos that you choose. So you notice these have like a muted, more pastel colors to them. They're not bold and super flashy and edgy or anything. How you'd crop these, the graphic treatment, all these different elements are things that you could put into a brand guide. And again, this is, if you're not familiar with this stuff, I wouldn't just suggest using Canva 
changing a couple colors and say, yay, I would suggest working with a graphic designer or brand specialist to refine this for your business so that you're creating a powerful brand guide that communicates to your messages. And that's really going to help when you have someone asking you questions, guiding you through the process. My company, Rock My Image, we've worked with a lot of different businesses and brands. And that's how we initially started as a brand agency. Rock My Image. We want to help people that are awesome. They have the attitude, the expertise, and drive to take what's awesome about it and rock their image. Now, it's funny. One time we were working with an attorney, and she is an estate attorney. And she's like, I don't know if I want my image rocked. We're rocking your image doesn't mean we're going to put you like in, in high heel stilettos or anything. It's just really making sure that you look sharp and you look produced. You look the part of being the rock star professional that you are. So you can show the people behind your team, your contact information. And this is just one template, by the way. And you could change templates in here simply by clicking a button and you can preview this other layout here and simply just click and now you've got a completely different brain guidelines. So this can be a way, a powerful way that you can start to get some ideas laid out. And if you already have some branding elements, you can start putting them in there and documenting what you have. But then as you're expanding upon that, as you're building your brand guide, don't just wing it. Work with somebody that has the experience, that has the knowledge, that can guide you to take the right actions and do a service of your brand. Because as we saw before, people can tell. They can tell the difference to people when they when you see something, you get it in the mail, you watch a video, you can tell the difference. And it depends on what you're doing. If you're creating a video, like this is a YouTube video that I'm creating, it's low production, recording it, using some slides, and just sharing information, talking to an audience. But if I was going to be doing a TV commercial that was going to be putting a large advertising campaign to promote a product, it would be a different investment. You'd be doing a production. Now, if you're working to put out a particular flyer to send or an email to send to your audience, maybe you can have your graphics that you have, you put your logo on there, you put your copy on there. You could use something like Canva to get the job done. You can use your internal marketing team or you can hire a marketer to help you get that done. But if you're working on your brand, you want to make sure that you're going through the process in full and you're working with a guide that can help you get the brand that you're trying to bring into the world addressed, done right, and not cheap. It's the foundations of your business and its identity. So do it right and give it your best. To show your support, take a moment to amplify this message by sharing it online. To connect with me or gain more business growth insights, visit www.growthamplifiers.com. Thank you for your support.